guys, I get this question all the time on my Twitter, on my Facebook. Um, some people have requested it as a video request. Um, so I figured I would just go ahead and make the video. These are the top 10 things that I think are most important when uh, you're trying to grow your hair out healthy and long. Um, or just healthy, it doesn't have to be long either way. So the first thing is something that I, you know, am like a broken record saying. I feel like I say it all the time. Um, and I think it's probably one of the most important things. Keeping your hair moisturized day and night. Basically, you know, your hair needs water just like your body does. It's a part of your body. You need to keep it hydrated inside and out. Um, so, you know, I spritz my hair day and night. Just a little bit of water. It's not going to make your hair pop up, you know, uncontrollably. Lightly mist your entire head. You can seal it in with an oil-based sealant like a shea butter or a mango butter or whatever is appropriate for your, you know, the thickness and density of your hair. It's not something that you can do like for a month and then all of a sudden your hair is moisturized from then on. No, it's daily moisturizing. Just like you need to drink water every day, you need to hydrate your hair every day. Um, and by the end of the day, my hair usually is dry, like right now it's pretty dry. Um, and I'll just spray it again at night before I wrap it up for bed. Um, keeping it moisturized is number one, it's really important. Number two, trim when necessary. Obviously trimming your hair is important for your hair health, especially if you get split ends or lots of single strand knots in your hair. Um, but I say trim when necessary. Some people, you know, they trim every month or they're on a specific regimen and that's great. You're keeping your hair healthy. But I don't think that doing it every month is really necessary. I just pay attention to the health of your hair and trim when you need it. I trim my hair about, it seems like once every eight months, since it's been growing longer, I've been trimming a little bit more often. Um, so just kind of pay attention to, uh, you know, if your ends are splitting or if you're, you're getting more knots, then it's time for you to trim your hair. Um, I just say that because if you're trimming every month, then you might not need to trim your hair and you're just cutting off your length if your goal is to grow your hair long. Number three is don't over shampoo. Um, Co-washing is really great. When I used to use shampoo and conditioner, I'd go to the store and I'd buy three bottles of conditioner for every like one bottle of shampoo um, because I like to co-wash more often than I like to shampoo because shampoo strips the oils from your hair um, which is why you have to put the conditioner back on to re-moisturize so it's very drying to your hair and I don't think it's necessary to shampoo every single time uh, you can uh, cleanse your hair with the conditioner alone and it's a lot more moisturizing so I'd say number three is you know just don't over shampoo think about um, adding more co-washing into your routine if you do use shampoos and conditioners number four Four, low manipulation styling. This is, I think, really important because our edges are so fragile, our hair is so fragile, um, that it's really important not to, you know, tie your hair too tight into ponytails, don't slick your hair back. If you're doing braided styles like cornrows or twists or whatever, just be very careful not to pull too tightly at your scalp. Because not only can that rip out your hair, but you might actually damage your follicles and it might not grow back. So just really low manipulation styling, loose ponytails, um, you know, loose updos. I wear my hair out a lot more than I wear it back just because I like wearing my hair out, but I think that it's that the hair like really benefits from just being free sometimes. So, but if you don't like to wear your hair out, just, you know, keep it loose. If you're using ponytail holders, just wrap it around once, you know, you don't need to have it wrapped twice and extra tight to hold your hair in. Just wrap it around once, keep everything nice and loose so that there's room to breathe and it's not pulling too hard at your root. Number five is protective styling. I wear my hair out a lot, but, um, you know, my hair does get dry, like I told you, and I, it, you know, there are times when I realize that, okay, well, spritzing my hair every day isn't working, um, you know, it's actually more dry than usual, and that's when I know, you know, it's time to do protective styling. So I think that that's important, doing a protective style every once in a while. You can even, you know, just wear your hair in protective styles you know, forever if you want to. But I think incorporating them every once in a while is important just to give your hair a break from the stress of styling and also to protect the ends. And I have a whole blog post about protective styling and moisturizing and all that kind of stuff. I'll put that in the description box below all the links for if, if you want like more information about anything I'm talking about. Number six, this one's kind of a silly one, but it's pretty important. Um, don't do your hair when you're stressed out or when you're mad or when you're feeling anxious. It's gonna be much more impatient, much more rough on your hair than you would if you weren't stressed out or angry. So if you're having a bad day, if you don't feel like doing your hair, just throw a plastic cap on it to lock in the moisture, put your satin bonnet on, and head to bed, and do it um, another day when you're feeling better. That way you're not gonna rip out your hair um, and regret it, you know what I mean? I've done my hair when I was upset before, and 
it's just not a good idea. Number seven, be mindful of the accessories that you put in your hair. I didn't really start using these like type of ponytail holders until my hair kind of hit my shoulder. Um, a lot of times I just used bobby pins to hold my hair up, hair clips to hold my hair up, like claw clips. Um, you know, or these kind of plastic clips. The reason that I waited to use these ponytail holders until like it hit my shoulders because I didn't want to be pulling my hair too tight to get it into a ponytail. So if your hair is like really short and you want to get into a ponytail, just kind of, you know, either put it back with bobby pins or put a claw clip on it. And also avoid accessories that have metal in it because that can rip out your hair too. Just be very careful with the accessories that you choose to put in your hair and how you put them in. Just be very gentle. Like I said before with the ponytails, just don't put them too tight because you can really really damage your edges. Okay, all right, I got my hair in now. Number eight is avoid brushes and combs when possible. When I was relaxed, I used to use this guy, a boar bristle brush, that's what that is. And then when I went natural, I used the Denman brush and I modified it by taking out every other row. And then I used a tangle teaser, wide tooth comb. This one, I don't recommend you use. It's gonna pull out your hair a lot. Um, it's just not really good for natural hair. The bristles are way too harsh. They're very hard, they're very close together, and your curls are just gonna wrap around and get pulled out. So, you know, avoid boar bristle brushes when you can. Sometimes I use this, I haven't used this in probably like, I don't know, a year maybe, I don't know. I haven't used it in a long time and I really don't ever wanna use it again. Now, these guys are a little bit safer. The Denman, the comb, and the tangle teaser. Now, I don't use a tangle teaser anymore just because so much, like, I saw so many bad reviews about it online when it came out, like, people saying that it ripped out their hair. And I never did it to my hair, but I didn't want to risk it, so I don't use the tangle teaser anymore. This is actually good because you guys ask me these questions all the time. I think some of the safest brushes and combs to use are a wide tooth comb and the Denman brush, um, where the bristles are plastic first of all, and they're wide set. So that's really good for your hair where the curls won't get caught too much, they won't get ripped out. Um, and then of course, you know, your wide tooth comb because the, the teeth are wide, obviously. <laughs> I used to use combs and brushes a lot um, in my regimen. A lot of my videos show that. Um, but for the past year or so, I really have been cutting down on using them a lot. Like I do a lot more finger detangling. And it's really not as hard as I thought it was, especially with the um, mud wash that I use. It's just so easy. Um, to finger detangle and I think that's also helped with you know not a lot of hair being pulled out and all that kind of stuff so when you can tip number eight is to avoid combs and brushes but if you can't avoid combs and brushes stick to plastic brushes with really wide set teeth that won't rip out your hair as well as wide tooth combs number nine is you are what you eat so if you want long healthy hair, eat healthy food, you know, eat a lot of protein. Your hair is protein, so give it what it needs to grow well. There are instances where, you know, people who don't eat healthy, they have long hair and they're just freaking lucky, you know, whatever. I don't know what that's about because that's not me. <laughs> if I, like, eat something bad, I will see it the next morning. But, you know, there's people who will eat, you know, unhealthy food and they have great long hair, great skin, you know, congratulations, that works. But, um, you know, if it's not working for you, maybe think about changing your diet. Um, if you feel like you're not eating healthy, try eating healthier. And my last tip, number 10, is what I think is probably just as important as the first tip. It's not a race, it's a marathon. So, you know, don't obsess over having long hair. Um, because you know like how they say a wash pot never boils like you're just gonna it's gonna feel like it's taking longer to grow just ignore the fact that you know you don't have long hair or that you want long hair just go about your day and you're gonna wake up one day and it's gonna be like dang where would all this hair come from when i first went natural and i had like my twa my really really short hair um you know i thought that was it honestly i didn't think it was going to grow any longer i thought you know this is me forever now and i accepted that and um you know, it wasn't until it started growing that I would realize that, hey, my hair is, you know, gonna grow back to the same length. Awesome. Um, but basically, the fact that I wasn't paying attention to my hair growth, I think really helped because um, I hear a lot of girls, you know, they write me on Facebook or they tweet me and they're saying, you know, I'm really frustrated, you know, I'm about to put, you know, the creamy crack, I'm about to relax my hair um, because I'm really frustrated with it. It's not growing and all this kind of stuff, but you know, our hair takes years to even see the length because of all the shrinkage. Um, so, 
when you go natural, if you did do the BC, if you did cut off all your hair and you're dealing with really short hair, just accept it, you know, accept that you have short hair and be okay with that. Because if you don't, you're going to drive yourself crazy. It's going to seem like it takes you forever to see your length. And um, if you just, you know, take it easy and go with the flow, accept your hair at every single length that it's in, you're going to have a much happier time growing your hair out. And it'll just be a lot you'll be a lot happier. That's why when I, I don't do length checks all the time, you know? I do length checks maybe like once a year, once every eight months or whatever, because I, I don't think about my length. I'm just, you know, it is what it is. I've always been this way. It's not just because I have long hair now. Even when I had short hair, I, it, was just, it is what it is, you know? It's my hair on my head and that's cool, whatever. So just, you know, try, try to take it easy and then your hair will feel like it's growing a lot faster. Yeah, so those are my 10 tips. 10 tips on uh, how to grow, you know, healthy, long, natural hair. I hope that they helped. Some of you guys wanted me to do a graduation cap video for short hair, and I filmed it, and um, I don't know, it felt kind of redundant because it was basically the styles that I had already posted in my TWA video. So I'm just going to link that below my TWA video. All of those styles are great for if you have short hair um, under a graduation cap because that's basically what I did in my video. And also it's better that way because you can actually see what it looked like with my short hair instead of me showing you and saying, hey, imagine that my hair is short. You know, I do still have the footage that I filmed. If you want to see it, leave me a, a message below in the comments um, and I'll post it. But I just, I didn't think it was postable you know what I mean because I already did the styles and I felt it was kind of silly but if you want to see it, I'll definitely you know post it um, but yeah I hope the tips helped you guys and if you have any more questions feel free to leave them below um, if you want to tweet me or Facebook me I tend to answer those questions a lot faster um, so you know hit me up there if you want to and yeah enjoy the rest of your week it's so beautiful uh, I'll see you guys later bye